for all my longtime astrophotographer friends. You know those nights when everything's just going wrong and it doesn't feel like anything's going to work no matter how hard you try? Tonight's not one of those nights. Everything just feels right tonight. I think it's going to be a really good one. Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and in this video we're going to be photographing the Veil Nebula. Not just the Veil Nebula, the whole Cygnus loop. I've photographed this target before, the Eastern Veil, the Western Veil. I've never photographed Pickering's Triangle and the entire region all at once. It's called the Cygnus Loop. Obviously it's in the constellation Cygnus, but I've never shot it with a, a wide field telescope before. And uh, the William Optics Z73 that you see here at 430 millimeters is perfect. I should be able to capture the whole thing, even with a crop sensor DSLR, my Canon 60DA. So I hope you join me for a night of astrophotography in the backyard capturing the Veil Nebula. Good boy. After a really hot start to the summer, July was just so muggy and sweaty and damp. Now at the beginning of August here, it's very dry. There's a bit of a breeze and it's even cooled off quite a bit. It's going down to 17 degrees tonight. So there is a, I believe it's about 70% illuminated moon tonight. So lots of, plenty of moonlight in the sky. So I won't be shooting with a broadband filter in true color. Tonight it's narrow band specifically the OPT Triad Ultra Filter. And uh, so the reasons for choosing this filter is the target itself, the Veil Nebula. With the DSLR, my previous results using the 6DDA with this, the OPT Triad Filter were really astonishing. I shot uh, the Lagoon and Trifid Nebula and uh, I just couldn't believe how it just stripped away the light pollution and just bang, those, those objects in Sagittarius were just jumping out of the screen. So. The Veil Nebula is a similar target in the fact that it's extremely bright and there's a huge separation between this nebula and the night sky, especially when you're using one of these narrowband filters. So it jumps out specifically in HA and O3. Those are the, the dominant band passes of this object and, and that this filter does a great job of. The H beta and the S2 are there too to kind of normalize and help balance out the colors, but it's that HA and O3 that are really gonna make this object jump out. I'm, I'm almost positive that I can frame up the entire Cygnus loop using this Z73 telescope at 430 millimeters. It might get close to the edges, so that's just in a great spot for tonight. I think the filter is a great choice. I haven't shot the veil all year. I'm looking forward to some more DSLR astrophotography. As much as I love the, uh, the seat dedicated CMOS cameras and uh, motorized focusers and those really robust rigs, the, uh, there's something to be said about simple DSLR astrophotography. Maybe it's just the, the, ch the extra challenge that comes with a DSLR, yet the simplicity of the, the gear. Uh, there's something I really love about it, so fingers crossed. I should mention, I'm actually filming on a different camera tonight. This is a Pentax K1 Mark II and an f2.8 uh, 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And uh, I was just thinking, I haven't used this lens at night yet. I just checked what the ISO setting was on this camera, 819,000. Just polar align the EQ6R the old school way through the polar finder, you know, getting down on my knees and looking at Polaris. It's a bit breezy, um, but it is still clear out here. And uh, the temperature is really nice. It's beautiful, actually. So hopefully that wind dies down a little bit and it stays clear. And uh, I can already see the brightest stars popping up. I see Jupiter close by the moon. Last night it was really close to the moon. It was a conjunction. And I can see Deneb and Altair and Vega and the Summer Triangle, so just a great night so far. All right, so the mount is polar aligned and star aligned. I did a two star alignment routine on Vega and Deneb, so roughly in the same area of the sky, so uh, and real close to my target too. I remember NGC 6992 is one of the, uh, it's either the east or the west veil, 
Uh, so that will put them in the field of view and then I'll be framing up the target using some test exposures. Uh, running the camera through astrophotography tool. I'll take 10 second exposures. Uh, it's already in focus. I did that with my alignment stars. And uh, this, this narrow band filter, sometimes it can be tough to frame up and find your objects when you've got this harsh filter in front of your camera sensor. This one lets in probably a little more light than say just like a straight up 12 or 6.5 nanometer uh, HA filter. Even with an HA filter in there, you can use a bright star. The brightest stars will still come through. So in the summertime, Vega, Deneb, Altair, Dubé, all those ones, Arcturus, you'll still see those through a narrowband filter. So it's fine for a star alignment with that filter in there. And then framing, once you're, you've got the pointing accuracy of your mount trained, uh, you should be able to get close to your target and see that HA, if, even if you have to take out, you know, a 30 second or a one minute exposure just to see kind of where it is. So I'll take that test exposure now. Like I said, I've, uh, I've put it on NGC 6992. I actually don't even think I hit enter. So a quick hop over from Deneb down at the bottom of Cygnus there. And now I'm gonna shoot a 15 second exposure at ISO 6400 and we should see the Veil Nebula. Always an exciting time. All right, what do we've got there? Oh, I see a very faint wisp. Um, so that is actually the Eastern Veil Nebula. Of course I was wrong. Uh, so it is rather centered in the field of view Probably hard for you to see it, regardless if I do an auto stretch or not. Yeah, those uh, that's never pretty to look at. So it's right, it's kind of right here. So I'm going to look at a reference image online to see where I need to place that to get everything kind of lined up around it. And then I'll make the uh, subtle adjustments, movements to the mount with the uh, hand controller to line things up. You plate solving guys are gonna laugh at me, but I literally do this to frame up my targets all the time. I'll look on Google, an image search just to get an idea of where everything's at. So there's a great uh, image. Steve Canistra, I've heard that name before. Uh, so Steve, thank you for your reference image. I now realize that, uh, so the Eastern Veil is over there. So based on the way I've got it, and I've got the screen rotation turned off, that's important. Let's just open this in a new tab. And then I can actually turn it the way I see it on screen. So it looks like, I'm kind of looking like this, so I'm going to have to rotate. I'm going to have to rotate my camera because I'm kind of looking at it like like this right now. Here's my frame and man, it's a the, the nebulae are, are farther apart than I thought in the Cygnus loop. This might be tough. I might actually have to just do the Western Veil and part of uh, Pickering's Triangle. Maybe I can't get the entire loop with the, the image scale of this system. So I haven't actually ch moved the telescope at all at this point, but I did take a longer exposure. It's about to come through now. 30 seconds, okay, there. Now, yes, you can see it too. So there's the Eastern Veil, and uh, I am totally out of whack for my framing, but uh, uh, so it's gonna be close to whether I can fit this all in. I need to rotate the camera. Let's just check the angle I'm on here. We're looking at the, the Eastern Veil right there. So everything else we want is kind of over here. So if that's the case, then I need to put this guy right up here and hopefully we'll see how much we can bring everything on the other side. I set the target on the mount to NGC 6960, which is the Western Veil, the Witch's Broom. And uh, we'll see if that uh, finds the kind of middle ground between the two. That might be an easier starting point to frame this up. It's at 28 seconds, 29. Okay, about to come through. So you should see the witch's broom on the screen. I remember this is going through a uh, narrow band filter. There it is, so that's the central star of the, the wispy, the finger of God, if you can see it. Yeah, you can, it looks like you can just see it on the screen there. Okay, all right, I think that's a better reference point because that's closer to Pickering's Triangle. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for another night of astrophotography here in the backyard. I hope you stick around for my final image of the Western Veil Nebula and hopefully most of Pickering's Triangle. And then on the other rig, the uh, with the Rokinon 135, I shot the North American Nebula and the Pelican in HA. 
I'll share that black and white image as well at the end of the video. And until next time, clear skies.